Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Internet Roundup. Not just Internet Roundup. We're going to add a V to the beginning. Like Ohio State. We're established. <laughs> like Ohio State. And or uh, I just realized I have all my papers and paper. I don't even need this computer. It's just... It's, it's, a, it's kind of a prop. Yeah, that's how I like to look up stuff. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, but it is on, so maybe I'll just check into Facebook every now and then. Yeah, I've got Twitter pulled up. Do you? Uh-huh. That could be a new segment. It could be. All right. Well, uh, that's Josh, and I'm Chuck, and we do the Stuff You Should Know podcast, and we round up the internet two articles at a time, and we yeah. only have three million more years to go until we're finished. Until they let us leave. Yes, because they're no longer creating new content. Is that correct? No, they are. No, oh, okay. All right. First up, uh, Sirhan Sirhan. The assassin so nice they had to name him twice. <laughs> uh, killer of Robert F. Kennedy, alleged killer. Alleged. Can you say alleged if they were convicted? If enough people raise hay about whether it was him or not, but yeah, he was the convicted killer. You're right. Well, you know who's raising hay? Paul Schrade. That's right. And who is he? Oh, well, Paul Schrade actually was shot in the head by Sirhan Sirhan. Yeah. Um, he was Robert Kennedy's... Uh, labor director, I think, back during his uh, his Democratic run for the presidency in 1968. Yeah. And he was walking with him through the kitchen of the Ambassador Hotel right after Kennedy gave a speech when shots rang out. That's right. Supposedly, some people say 13 shots, uh-huh. although Sir Han's gun only held eight bullets. That's impossible. Paul Schrade, was, he took one to the head. Did not die, obviously, because he's alive today, but Robert Kennedy was killed. And one of the reasons why people say, including Paul Schrade, that uh, Sirhan Sirhan couldn't have been the killer, that, that he couldn't have been a lone gunman, right. was because uh, Robert Kennedy's fatal gunshot wound came from the back while Sirhan Sirhan was facing him. That's right. Another, those, those Kennedys I have know. magic bullets all over the place. Don't all they? over the place. Um, I have stood at that very spot. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Before they tore down the Ambassador Hotel, I was shooting a TV commercial there overnight. And, what were uh, you selling? Oh man, you know what? I can't even remember. I'm gonna say something silly. Hanes underwear, maybe, or Quaker State Motor Oil, maybe, or State Farm Auto Insurance. No, Toyota Automobiles. No. <laughs> uh, so we were shooting, and it was like Carmax, three in the morning, and the guy who sort of took care of the place at night said, "Hey, you want to go? Wow, uh, that's something. Go to the kitchen." Yeah. And I went, "Oh yeah, I certainly do." And it was creepy I'll and bet. awesome. And now was it, it abandoned at the time? Yeah. Oh man, I envy you. Yeah, it was really awesome, and uh, it's torn down now. It's no longer there. Right. So um, well, instead they put up a school. Apparently, Robert F. Kennedy Community Schools is on the site. I don't think I knew that. Uh, yeah, that's according wonderful. According to this AP article. Well, all of this is a long way of getting to the headline, which is uh, Sirhan Sirhan has been denied parole. But uh, interestingly, Paul Schrade showed up for the first time. Uh, at any of the parole hearings, first time he s- faced him since the trial in 1969, right? And he actively lobbied for him to be released this time. Yeah, because Paul Schrade again, he he said, "Sirhan, Sirhan, shoot me, shot me, shoot not, me, not, not again." <laughs> <laughs> he shot me in the head, and I forgive him. And right. He did at this. Uh, this is the 15th parole hearing, I think. Yeah, at 91 years old. Um, Paul Schrade is. Yeah. Sirhan, Sirhan, 71. That's right. Um, and Paul Schrade said, "I forgive you," and you guys have to let this guy out. He didn't kill Robert Kennedy. It's impossible. Yeah. Lobbied hard. He spoke for an hour. Apparently, it was slightly rambly because yeah. <laughs> after an hour, the uh, parole hearing uh, committee's um, commissioner, head, the commissioner said, yeah. uh, you need to wrap it up because, quote, frankly, you've lost us. Yeah. Uh, I think you've been lost for a long time is what Schrade shot back at him. Yeah. It was apparently very testy. The yeah. the um, commissioner was, he kept admonishing Schrade to not speak directly to Sirhan Sirhan. And yeah. He was like, you shut up. I'm going right to talk there. to Sirhan <laughs> Sirhan anytime I want because he and I shared something in the form of a bullet to the head. That's right. And uh, Sirhan, um, Mr. Sirhan, claims to this day that he doesn't remember anything that happened after he, right. I guess, blacked out from drinking Tom Collins that afternoon. So, yeah, he's to this day, he's like, I don't remember that day. Yeah. He made a couple of cryptic remarks around the time of his arrest and during the trial. Yeah, like, I did it for my country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but since then, he's been like, I don't remember a thing. Very interesting case. Um, he's like, it was the 60s. If you remember the 60s, you weren't there. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Uh, and he... Um, 
Well, he's been denied every time and probably will continue to. And the reason he's in prison for life is because his death sentence was uh, commuted right. when California overturned the death penalty in 1972. Well, plus he is. he. Could, I mean, he's obviously eligible for parole or else they wouldn't be holding these parole hearings. Yeah. But he never gets the parole for the same reason. He says that he doesn't remember. And in response, the parole committee says, well, then therefore you're not showing remorse for the right. crime. Yeah. And you clearly don't understand the enormity of the crime. Therefore back to prison for you man I think I would just say you know what I remember now and yeah, I feel yeah. terrible about it yeah but I mean worst thing I ever did was shoot Robert Kennedy right let me out yeah I mean I don't think too many people would blame him or he could pull a red from Shawshank and say it doesn't make a darn difference parole accepted yeah it was like office space kind of I don't know. Where he was like, I, I don't care about anything. They're like, you're you're promoted. Oh, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That's right. what Red did. <laughs> gotcha. There is a connection there. Uh, all right, and this next one, I'm going to let you uh, take it away, Josh. <laughs> so there's a great site called Moyers & Company. It's Bill Moyers' website. Mm -hmm. And um, they they pull a little bit of the Utney reader sometimes. They go around and read articles in the alternative press. Sure. And um, they republished a an article that was originally in Yes Magazine. Is that what All caps with yeah. an exclamation point. <laughs> and uh, Yes Magazine ran a uh, an article by a wealthy, wealthy, wealthy entrepreneur named Nick Hanauer. Yeah. And Nick Hanauer um, runs a little more toward the um, the Bill Gates side of billionaireism, where he says, uh, maybe income inequality isn't the greatest thing ever. And as a matter of fact, he took his position um, to write this article for Yes Magazine to say this whole $15 an hour um, minimum, minimum wage, wage yeah. idea is a good idea. It's what we should do at a minimum. Sorry for the pun. And he said, if you hear any business owner that says, I can't afford it, don't buy it. Yeah. And he makes a pretty good point. He goes, um, McDonald's has far higher costs in Seattle where he lives sure. than it does in, say, Alabama. Yeah. And yet McDonald's are doing great in both places. Yeah. I wonder about the small business, um, but I read an article the other day that basically said small businesses will just raise their prices right. to cover the wage increase. Sure. Consume, passing along the cost to the consumer. Right. But at a well, rate remember, of pennies per product. Right. I, I mean, if they do it honestly. Yeah. You you remember when Obamacare was passed, there were a lot of companies that said, well, fine, I'm going to tax you, my customer, and, and pass along the co the added cost of Obamacare. Right. Uh, and I think most people were like, fine. Yeah. Or if, if they're not fine with it, then they just stop going there. Right. Uh, so it still does seem to work out, and that's Hanauer's point. But ultimately, his point is, it, it's, it's, it's twofold. It's that if somebody says, we can't afford a $15 minimum wage... You call BS on them. Okay. And then secondly, um, his point is is that we need a $15 minimum wage at least because despite the idea that trickle-down economics, that if you if you make the, the people at the top super wealthy, yeah. they create jobs, he's saying basic economic principles reveal that to be, to be an utter lie. Yeah, in a capitalistic uh, country. In capital, right. This yeah. is, he's not talking at all about socialism. No. He's saying in, in capitalism, pure capitalism, like Adam Smithian capitalism, Yeah, it, it's the middle. The middle supports everything else. Yeah, And you can just look at our tax base. It's the people at the middle that are squeezed the most. They're supporting those who have the least. And they're also covering those who have the most, who have the, the money to pay accountants to get out of paying real taxes. Yeah. Of course it's the middle that supports everything else. So Nick Hanauer's point is invest in the middle and the rest of the economy will do great. Yeah. And you do that by raising the minimum wage rather than this weird model that we're in now where productivity is through the roof, sure. but wages aren't climbing at all. Right. And he's saying like, if you, if the people in the middle have money, then they go out and support the economy. They spend that money. Well, he makes two really interesting points to me. One is uh, low wage workers stuck on a path to poverty are not only weak customers, in other words, not buying stuff. Mm -hmm. They're anemic taxpayers, absent citizens, and inattentive neighbors. Yeah. Give them a, a job where they ha can work one job, one job and not three jobs to right. support their family. Yeah. And they might volunteer. They might invest in their children and right. their education. Sure. And the other point he makes, and boy, this is a good one. Uh, 
an economic arrangement that pays a Wall Street worker tens of millions of dollars per year for high-frequency trading and pays tens of thousands to workers who grow and serve our food, build our homes, educate our children, uh, and risk our lives to protect us, firefighters, police officers, uh, isn't an expression of true value of economic necessity of these jobs. It simply reflects a difference in bargaining power and status. Exactly. We need teachers. We need firemen. We don't pay them squat. Uh, the Wall Street guy makes tens of millions of dollars. It doesn't mean his job is any more important. It's just uh, where he ended up in life, or she. Sure, right. And and you can also make the case that it's actually, in in a lot of cases, harmful to the economy. Those jobs. Very interesting. It is extremely interesting. So and uh, the, I mean, there's probably people rocking in you know their seat <laughs> on the Delta flight right now, just going absolutely nuts. Settle down. Calm down. Because yeah. we're not communists. We're not socialists. It, it has nothing to do with conservative or Republican or Democrat or anything like that. Like, we're talking about economic theory here. Yeah. A pro- and, building a prosperous nation that works for everyone. Right. Uh, so just uh, return your seat back to its upright position or no, and no, enjoy your re- flight. Recline it a little bit, <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, yeah, plutocrats and kleptocrats rip off everyone, not just socialists or democrats or the left i think that's a great parting shot so good day everyone and uh, we'll see you next time on internet roundup